This is Branko Malic of Kali Tribune. This will be uh, a new podcast in our series of uh, basic notions of metaphysics. And this time around, in a uh, customarily informal uh, manner, customary that is for this uh, series of podcasts, we'll talk about inversion of meaning of terms or concepts and notions of metaphysics uh, in our day and age. And we won't go uh, talking about abstract uh, general principle without talking about uh, taking an example of two terms uh, that uh, display this phenomena splendidly. Those two terms, that is to say two complementary opposites, are material and formal. Once again, material and formal. Or coming, of course, from matter and form. Now, I don't know, was this uh, my subconscious mind uh, doing its nefarious work, but I just made a point via negativa. I put them in the wrong order. When talking about these terms, uh, especially these metaphysical complementary opposites, not just opposite, complementary opposites. That means that they are opposed, yet unified in some sense. Uh, that they are one, <coughs> yet uh, different in some sense. The order is essential. You cannot talk about them except in a certain hierarchical order. And this order, proper order, would be form and matter, not matter and form. Uh, in this podcast, we'll more talk about <coughs> um, the appliance, uh, that is to say, uh, I'm sorry, my bad English, application or enactment, acting of these principles. So we'll, we won't talk so much about form and matter, but formality and materiality as qualities of beings. Now, I would ask you to think for yourself just for a few seconds. When I say, for instance, my address to you is something purely, purely formal. What qualification does this have to you? In what way I'm addressing you? Am I addressing you with utmost seriousness and utmost uh, heartfelt profoundness or, of meaning? Or I am I'm just uh, addressing you uh, in a manner that is completely and absolutely uh, purely, that is, as I said in, the, in, in, in example, uh, superficial. I think that I don't have to uh, point out the correct answer. And this is, uh, I think, uh, the proper approach to these problems, uh, kind of... Uh, <clears throat> put ourselves in a position that we can see in ourselves, in our here and now, uh, in our very act of thinking, how we are doing, in fact, something wrong. Or maybe something right. But in this sense, what we did, I would say, and uh, kudos to those who haven't done it, is inverting the meaning inverting not only the meaning but uh, also the supposition that stands behind these terms. If I were to address you formally uh, in an original sense, that would mean, and it is arguable could I even put the sentence in this way, that would mean that I am addressing you most energetically, <laughs> let's say. And energetically in this sense would not mean uh, temperamentally, although maybe uh, it is a good, uh, it is the term that would give you a good impression because it is the opposite of superficial, but uh, addressing you with utmost profundity of seriousness. Speaking purely formal would be, in a way, maybe. Uh, to take a bold step and say, speaking the language of angels, perhaps. And this, indeed, this inversion is a quite curious thing. 
Now, forma in scholastic tradition with a capital T, of course, <clears throat> uh, comes from Greek eidos, although it can be translation of other terms, those terms are convertible, those, those, uh, some of them, those main metaphysical terms. It's never uh, uh, so clear cut which word is rooted in exactly which other word for, from Greek, for instance, because words are just um, means to express realities that transcend words. So you can have few words uh, saying same thing, and in the other instance, saying completely different things, or one word saying many different things. So it's uh, <clears throat> it's not something I can go into now uh, for the sake of brevity, but we talk a lot about this on Kali Tribune and write about this also. Uh, so <clears throat> this term originally meant when you have idea that something is, for instance, formally distinct or formally existent. This means existing, distinct and existing in the most profound, most uh, abundant and most substantial way. Ask yourselves, if you please, uh, again, is this the way how you would think about something formally existing? I think that it is not necessary to point out that you, as well as I, are thinking something different. Uh, why this happens is uh, somewhat of a mystery to me. And this is really a question of history of philosophy, because this is historical thing. You notice this. I, I didn't notice this from just living in this world and, and, and uh, not knowing what philosophy is or what theology or metaphysics is, but from the study, you kind of notice, notice this. And I, uh, these things are um, the expression of our day and age. And problem is that this expression is most certainly not adequate for uh, what we call traditional thought and what we call tradition with capital T because it clearly inverts it. And what is interesting, <clears throat> the very, uh, uh, the very uh, everyday speech at its uh, choke points, that is to say at the junctures where he it is uh, uh, caused it is it is it is clearly caused by something uh, greater than it by expressing the principles through which we understand ourselves civilizationally <clears throat> is uh, using inverted terms i think this is something that is very easy easy to demonstrate because it is in us <clears throat> and this is one of the reasons I, I am very, very uh, cautious towards people, especially from the English Anglophone uh, world, let's call it like that, who uh, take these philosophers that wrote in Latin, as Thomas Aquinas, for instance, or who is very important for this understanding of this form matter distinction because he used it. This formality is very, very important to him to understand it correctly because if you don't, you, you understand nothing in him. You invert him also. They use these terms, that is to say, these, let's say, internet, uh, internet based. Uh, I don't know, philosophists or whatever. And uh, don't see any problem, for instance, uh, don't see any problem in talking about a medieval thinker uh, using his terms, uh, something is pure formal distinction but without pause. As if they have no problem with this. 
it is to me a clear indication that they have a problem and that they are understanding it very probably in inverted sense because if you are a modern postmodern that is man no matter how rooted in something you are if you are participating in the global western civilization you have to make this conscious you have to become aware that you are at least at superficial level thinking and speaking in inverted terms if you didn't do this if you don't qualify thereby what you are speaking about previous times you are probably one of those who are inverting these things and this inversion is almost imperceptible because it is so obvious and it has its let's say <coughs> formal aspect somebody would say material but this is a formal aspect it's energizing aspect of completely inverting uh, the approach towards reality expressed by it because in logic that is to say in ontology uh, metaphysics but in logic as a form of uh, guiding the thought the only form of guiding the thought we have inherent to us uh, it is very important it is essential or essential substantial that there is what what I used to call suppositio the nature one of the explanations of this term suppositio is nature to which your terms terms are using you are using are caused that's wh where they come from and this nature is, in my opinion, uh, most often uh, something unspoken because uh, you are doing activity of thinking uh, while the initial act, uh, initial principle of thinking is not something you initially reflect upon. It, it comes with time, maybe, that you revert back into your own start point and then you see this and then if you if you made errors and errors uh, if man is humble errors are what will and and suffering is something that will uh, most assuredly bring you back to correct yourself enjoyment of your own uh, <laughs> uh, let's say suck uh, intellectual successes uh, is not really something that will uh, turn you back it will most likely uh, push you forward ever forward 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 now why is this important because uh, when you think about logic today if you studied philosophy you heard about term formal logic now the, this uh, is an epitome of what I find wrong in this inversion of terms in applying terms invertedly formal logic is a logic that pays no heed and I'm a bit simplifying pays no heed to content of its operations if ancients or medievals used this term they would mean opposite formal logic will be let's call it again energetic logic active logic a real logic the logic that is so chock full of content that you are uh, that it is in fact as as such not possible for humans it's superhuman knowledge this is something for instance that that uh, hegel had in mind with uh, his uh, ontological metaphysical logic of the absolute science now of course this is a deviation of the original principle also but it is a different kind of deviation because in Hegel we have a man who was aware aware of the meaning of this aware of the nature of the relationship between mind or intellect and reality but his ambitions were and presuppositions were something that led him in very very dangerous and perilous direction <clears throat> 
but we'll just we'll mention him once more because there is uh, one of uh, one of the terms he uses is very good about the nature of mind. Anyways, uh, formal logic today is uh, understood as, for instance, uh, the the doctrine of uh, uh, let's say correct uh, correct uh, correct logical operations and their truth values as they call it not the truth because truth has nothing to do with this modern logic but you have correctness uh, you have certainty belief uh, such things it's it's a uh, problem is uh, that such logic is completely uh, divorced by its definition from the actual reality uh, it, it has to be and uh, I will not here go into into deeper study of where this comes from. It comes from originally, I think, the, the historical inception of this understanding, which is in fact mathematical understanding of logic, was by George Boole and Boole's alge Boolean algebra and so on and so forth. Uh, maybe with Leibniz even earlier. Uh, but this is not... Uh, if you think in this way, what I want to point out, to put things on street level, to... To, to, to talk about metaphysics in our everyday life so we can see how this concerns us. Uh, problem is that the, uh, most of us initially uh, and unconsciously think in this way. And the good example of this is obviously, uh, as I pointed out in the beginning, that we use some terms in inverted, inverted sense. So when you approach these... Uh, medieval thinkers for instance if you are into formal logic uh, you can be very quick uh, to apprehending uh, the structure of their thought that is to say abstract structure and purely formal structure because it is the way you see it you are looking them, at them through the lenses of uh, inverted understanding of formality and then you end up with your knowledge becoming vast sometimes, but purely empty of content. And this is something that is very hard to perceive. Because initially, uh, a real thinker uh, does not bother himself, a real traditional thinker, or the one who is participant in the knowledge of Scientia Sacra, for instance. He doesn't bother with psychological things like moods or uh, what we like now, these psychological uh, states, uh, uh, the uh, one's own individual or personal spiritual journey and such things. There is no hint of that in them. But this is not something because this is not uh, because they are pure formalists as the moderns would see them but because uh, they are pure formalists in an actually formal sense they were interested in uh, pure uh, principles yeah. and being pure being means being purely actual so this is something that is expressed in the in the term of formality Whereas materiality is uh, congenial to or uh, convertible with uh, possibility and more like with inertia than with activity. If we want to talk about it in impressions, we can have in, in these qualifying impressions which uh, kind of uh, take these terms closer to our everyday understanding because today we are prone uh, to follow, to adhere to this ideal of experience, of experience in something tangibly. But this was not, not always so. There were times when this was something quite different. And it's very, quite, very hard to wrap one's mind around it. Uh, because we, when we see these uh, impersonal uh, doctrines and, and investigations, we automatically tend to understand them as formal systems, which they are not. The thing is that they are so high up on the ladder towards the truth that we are looking at them from the very low point. 
so we miss a lot and we we, rep we uh, tend to re misrepresent them to us now one hegel's term i like and i will i will uh now use is uh, instinct that uh, the instinct of mind not reason mind you uh, sometimes the people translate this vernunft uh, in Kant in Hegel's reason this is not reason this uh, they differentiate be between reason and mind intellect and uh, reason this is very important ah absolutely important uh, for, for both of them especially for Hegel because the intellect is this real uh, real power of transcendence of metaphysics and so on uh, I don't agree in one bit with Hegel but uh, this is not the point the point is this instinct uh, for him the instinct <coughs> of mind is the mind's ability to be restless until it comes to truth now this is excellent excellent insight in Hegel but problem is this subjectivist note of instinct this is not in truth instinct this is uh, the nature of the formal activity of mind and I now I use formal in this energetic active sense when you have the pursuit of truth when you are investigating the truth no matter in no matter what whether that be social reality let's give it an example why oh, why a fag marriage is wrong or why this intersexual intersectional uh, feminism or what else is wrong a lot of people initially just say it's wrong and then you ask them why and they cannot give account why but in most cases it's like with uh, saint augustine when he says when somebody asks me what is time when nobody asks me i know yet when somebody asks me then i don't know does this mean that time does not exist no it does not mean that it does not exist it means that there is a knowledge a priori knowledge that is not uh, that is just the initial point from where you start it's some kind of intuition of both beginning and the end of investigation because it ends up circular in a way a syllogism for instance is a circular a perfect syllogism is a perfect circle but it uh, enlarges your knowledge nevertheless and what what this means <clears throat> this this uh, situation so i start to investigate because most people uh, most people will not do that uh, most voters will not do that and politicians are very aware of this because it is uh, troublesome it is it is uh, toilsome it is a uh, hard work uh, hard work in which you don't use hands you don't use anything in fact but you let this enact the muscle of your soul so to speak in, in in one particular power of the soul you are enacting it uh, you are doing its activity and <clears throat> when you uh, realize why only then will you feel at ease and this is i think you will agree with me when you think about these terms uh, this is something that is uh, best seen in satire if satire can uh, break down your standpoint there is something wrong with your point not because uh, because satire uh, ridicules it but because there is something ridiculous still in it and ridiculous is paralogical it's something that seems logical but it's not logical that seems true but it's not true never and this mind coming to peace means mind resting fulfilling its purpose if there is not fulfillment of this purpose then mind has not been fully actualized fully formalized it hasn't reached the form it has to reach on a given subject and that's why piecemeal solutions when principles are concerned 
are no solutions. They are not solutions, they are a problem. And it is very hard to come to the bottom of things, but it has to be done. And it is not something you can do easily. So when you start with an aporia, with something bothering you, it's quite natural. The thing that is not natural, you, when somebody does not start with it, but starts with a system and seemingly has all the answers. And theological doctrines are unfortunately very prone to be used in this way. And that's why, for instance, communism comes from theology. Because it is secular theology in the formal sense. It, 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 it goes from principles to particulars and back. But these are pure, pure, as they say, they say, call it formal. I would call them pure materials. Because pure system is a pure materiality in a sense. It's a, in an ideal, quasi-ideal sense. Because pure materiality you don't have. Uh, form is the thing that is congenial to what is most human in us and what is uh, in fact godlike in us and as such it is not something uh, we see first but it is something that is, that most deeply affects us and to be achieved is something uh, that is by definition not easy whereas to uh, make some kind of material possibilities uh, absolute in your mind and in your imagination, to be more precise, there, there's nothing easier than that. And we talked about, a lot about that in the past. So, to wrap it up, to not, not to go uh, too further ahead, uh, this would be uh, this would be the instance of this inversion, and I hope I was I was um, clear enough about how close it is to our everyday experience. And just to announce, uh, uh, as you probably know, I have that one longer article that is going into series. That I I hope it will be a part two of the word of old will be ready next week. It's it's quite a daunting task sometimes, and uh, well, uh, though we are just past holidays, uh, and uh, even Kali Tribune has holidays, so we were not that active uh, in this time of year. But I hope now we'll g uh, pick up some steam. Thank you for your attention. This was Branko Malic for Kali Tribune signing off.